They've influenced so much of popular culture in, in, in terms of the musical movements that followed. Um, if you think of the Pretenders, you think of R.E.M., you think of the Smiths, or the Tom Petty, that's just a small example, Teenage Fan Club. You, there are so many acts that have, that have benefited from what the birds did. Because it had that unique, chiming 12-string sound and a sort of like folk thing and a guy who kind of looked like Ben Franklin and it was not the typical uh, rock and roll picture. There was something really different about it. You can't really pin them down, you know? It's not just folk rock, it's not just country rock, it's not just psychedelia. That one band did all that is their legacy and that's, um, you know, I mean, that's a rich legacy to have. George Harrison, Ringo Starr. John Lennon. Paul McCartney. Nineteen sixty four, and Beatlemania hits America. The hysteria that surrounded the arrival of the Beatles and the subsequent influx of British bands, popularly known as the British Invasion, left American music beleaguered, uncertain, and desperate to find an answer to the sudden and drastic change of status quo. The arrival of the Beatles had just upended everything on the American musical scene. I mean, there suddenly was this incredible Anglophilia, and so anything from England, you know, quickly, you know, the Rolling Stones came over, the Animals came over, the Zombies came over. There was this sense of this flood of bands, and it just really overwhelmed you know, everything that was on the American music scene. We just were in awe of them. They were so good. They'd put out a song like Paperback Writer and I'd want to just give up because I could never do that. I could never get close to that. The British invasion really knocked the recording industry in the United States for a total loop. It came out of total left field and the Beatles and then the bands that came in just after them were dominating the business a lot of record companies were looking for their version of the Beatles. It was this search that would ultimately lead to the formation of the Birds. But prior to finding each other, the three founding members of the band, Roger McGuinn, David Crosby and Gene Clark, had been plying their trade within the various touring groups of the commercial folk scene. Though limited in scope, performing within a folk combo provided aspirational musicians with a stable platform from which to launch a career. Well, one of the interesting things is that the birds don't really come out of rock and roll. They come out of this, frankly, rather naff world of commercial American folk, uh, Chad Mitchell trio, so on, uh, you know, where these, wearing these slightly uh, preppy, almost, uniforms. Uh, and it, it, it's, it's, that in itself is a long way from Dylan and Beatnik Sheik in Greenwich Village. When they were trying to make it as folk musicians, there were a few ways they could have gone to make a successful career out of it. One was to play hoot and nannies, open mic sessions is what we might call them today, and hope to get noticed perhaps by a manager like Albert Grossman, or perhaps get noticed by someone who was leading a folk combo or group as Roger McGuinn had by the Chad Mitchell trio. It got around, you know, that McGuinn could have, you know, could, could accompany you on guitar or banjo or whatever. And his real break, I guess, came when he was allowed to be part of the Chad Mitchell trio. Only accompanying him in the background. He wasn't like, you know, he wasn't in the trio. Obviously, uh, they were out front and he was kind of at the back just hel helping them out. But um, although he was a junior member as such in The Kid, I think he was known as Skinny McGuinney at the time. Uh, he was with them for, for quite a long time. I mean, I think it was about two and a half years he was with them. And they toured extensively, and he got tremendous experience from that. And now, from the world of folk music, the Chad Mitchell Trio. <laughs> Oh, 
come and get your roast me, son. Oh, jamboree, book oh, jamboree, big round fat man. The Chasmichal Trio were, were reasonably well known. I don't think they were in the highest echelon of all, but they were certainly, you know, making reasonable money touring. They, they were known in, on, on the folk circuit. It was a very secure job to get. Uh, but the purest folkies wouldn't have, have you know, been particularly enamoured of, of the Chad Mitchell Trio because, you know, partly because they were making decent money, I guess, as much as anything. Come and get your roast me, son.